Hi there, Sage from Keeper. Welcome back to another video. In our last video, we covered the basics of the client portal, showed you how to add a contact, how to ask questions and triage the responses. So I recommend you check that one out if you haven't seen it yet. Today, we're gonna dive deeper into the client communication side of Keeper. So make sure to like this video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all future releases. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or send us a message using the purple widget in your Keeper account and check out the description for some helpful link and resources covering today's topic. Without further ado, let's dive in. A common question we're asked is, how can I ask my client a recurring question? And in Keeper, instead of messing with a ton of email back and forth, you can put all of your requests for your clients in the portal and send an email to notify them. In our last video, we focused on the transaction questions, meaning any transaction from the QBO or Zero Ledger that you need more information on, like on categorized transactions. But today, we're gonna talk about some other requests that are not necessarily transaction related. What we're gonna do next is click on the client. It's gonna take us to the close page and we're gonna to navigate to the client communication tab in the top left corner. Now here you have a summary of all the questions that have already been added to the portal. And the first tab is for transaction questions. The next one over is for non-transaction questions. And here we have two options. We can add a singular question to the portal by clicking on add question right here. Or if we want a question to recur, we can select this button. And this would be a perfect example for bank statement requests. So what we're gonna do is click on recurring questions. We're gonna add a recurring question, and then we're gonna type one in. And a pro tip is to write out a question for each statement that you need for each account. That way when your client responds, they're attaching the document to the appropriate question. We can then tag that to statements, and we can select the frequency. I'll choose monthly, and we're gonna set it up to happen every month on the first day of that month. And I'm gonna choose the very first due date to be this upcoming August. I'm gonna schedule it, and that's how easy it is to set up a recurring question. So we're gonna close out of this, and we don't initially see that new question here in our non-transaction questions tab, but don't worry, that's because it's not the first of the month yet, so the question just hasn't been added to the portal. Once it has been, you'll see it right here. Now that I've set up a recurring question, this request is gonna be added to the client portal automatically at the frequency that we just chose. However, it is important to be aware that this doesn't mean that the client is going to be emailed and notified. And why is that? Well, let's say you have five to 10 bank statements being added to the portal on the same day. You wouldn't want your client being spammed with five to 10 emails back to back. So just like with transaction questions, we allow you to decide when you're ready to notify your clients. So if you haven't already done that, first, you're gonna need to add a contact in the portal settings tab. So we're gonna navigate to the portal settings tab and you're gonna click on add a contact you're gonna go through all the appropriate information. And on the left-hand side, you're gonna notice that you can enable both email and text reminders afterwards. My strong recommendation is enabling the email reminders. That way you don't have to remember to email your clients each time the questions are added. And these are weekly reminders that are sent out on Mondays at 8 a.m. Eastern time. But of course, you can always change this in your practice settings if you'd like. And good news here is that if your clients don't have any outstanding questions in their portal, we're not gonna bother them. They're only gonna get emailed if there's outstanding questions in the portal and the cadence that you set up is met. Let's take a quick peek at how things look on the client side. What we're gonna do is in the portal settings, we're gonna navigate to this preview column and we're gonna select this eye emoji. From here, it's gonna take us right into the portal. That way you can see what the client sees. Now, when it comes to sending documents like bank statements, W-9s, and receipts, your clients can upload them in response to transaction or non-transaction questions. So in the transaction section, they can easily respond by uploading a file or adding a comment. And you can do the exact same thing for your non-transaction questions right here. Now, with the power of bookkeeping and editing, we're going to make that question from earlier up here. And just like that, you can see the chase statement question, the client can add a comment or upload a file as well. Now the client also has the option to drag and drop files on their main dashboard in the client portal. So under the dashboard, they can drag and drop a file right here. And if they do add a file here, it's gonna end up in what we call the client uploads inbox. So the way you get there is we're gonna close out of this and navigate to the client uploads tab right here and click on it. And now here we can see there is a document that's been uploaded. You can click on it to take a look. Friendly reminder to check out our last video for the client communication. You can close out of it and you also have this actions column where you can do a ton of different things like download the file, edit the name, or move it to a different location in Keeper. Now for bank statements, we recommend attaching them to your account reconciliation tasks on the close page, which you can do by clicking move file to. From here, we're gonna to go to the 
auto-organized tasks, click on closing tasks. And then from here, we can filter based on the account reconciliation section and pick whichever account we want to attach that file to. We can now see that the file is no longer here. And in fact, if we close out of this and scroll down to the account rec section, we can see that it is now attached to the appropriate account. The important thing here is to not let things pile up in the uploads inbox. Think of it as a place to receive and triage documents, but it's really best to move them to other tasks or folders within Keeper for more long-term storage. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is getting notified. And when your client answers a question or uploads a document, we wanna make sure that you are aware of that. So Keeper's gonna email you once a day, a summary of your client portal activity for the prior day, as long as you are subscribed to the digest notifications emails. And the way that you can enable this is by going to your user settings. So you're going to click on the top right corner, the user settings. You're gonna to navigate to the client questions tab. And here you wanna make sure that you have the appropriate clients added in this box right here. That way you can receive notifications when they answer questions. If you want instant notifications, feel free to check this off. But that is up to you. If you're an admin, you can also set this up in your practice settings. If you navigate to the all client settings, you can add them right here as well. So we're gonna go back to the homepage and that my friends is where we're going to call it for today. Appreciate you making it through this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. That way you can stay up to date on all future releases. If you got any questions, leave them in the comment section below or send us a message using the purple widget in the bottom right corner of your account and check out the description for helpful resources about today's topic. See you guys in the next one.